Many distribution companies have similar origin stories. Strong salespeople with entrepreneurial mindsets take the plunge into industrial supply because they're good at solving problems for customers. But then come the barriers. Running a distribution business requires dedicated business acumen, and many leaders find themselves bogged down with the day-to-day -day when they'd much rather be out on sales calls or visiting the plant floor of a key account. That's where solution providers can save the day. And today we're here to talk about how distributors can offload something as complex as the payments process in order to continue to focus on their core competencies. Credit Key is a B2B payment platform built around growing your business. From instant credit decisions, customer pre-approvals, to longer and larger credit terms, Credit Key can take the difficulty out of the payment process while adding capabilities. There's no doubt that the pandemic has played a critical role in digital transformation for the distribution industry. COVID has forced companies to look into new digital ways to streamline business processes, and business owners have greatly changed their procurement needs and their payment preferences. To dive into some of these changes, we have invited Eric Allen from Credit Key to talk about some of these changes or misconceptions about B2B payments and financing since the pandemic. Eric, what are some of the biggest changes that you've noticed? There's this conventional wisdom that says, oh, well, if they're only buying $500, they don't need to finance it. They can just pay cash for it or use their credit card. Our data says quite the opposite. That's pretty striking. In fact, um, on orders of $500 or under across all of our borrowers, all of our merchants, I mean, we're talking about tens of thousands of orders and transactions. Um, I want to say it's basically 35% of our best customers choose terms of 12 months for orders or $500 or under. So think about that. When we go to talk to a CFO at, at a distributor that's doing a couple hundred million dollars a year and they're offering terms, they say, oh, no, 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 we, our, our order sizes are small. People don't need to finance. And we kind of present the data that says, actually the number one business customer segment wants terms of 12 months for orders of just $500. That speaks volumes to how they think about managing their cash flow and how they spend. Um, so it's kind of throwing conventional wisdom on its head that says on small orders, people don't need to finance. In fact, people love to finance even small orders because it just gives them peace of mind for how they manage their business. Because at the end of the day, we're still talking about the number one issue that impacts small business, which is cash flow. I mean, we're, we're running a business and it's tough to manage the cash flow and giving people the ability to be able to choose their term to fit the sale, whether that's 30 days, three months, six months, or 12 months, depending on what they're purchasing, it's it's a great amount of flexibility for them. That's interesting. And it sounds like you're saying that many of those businesses don't even realize that that's a barrier. They don't. They don't. In fact, here's what happens. Mm -hmm. The crazy part is we'll talk to somebody in finance and they'll say, oh, there's no problem here. Um, and then I'll ask them, like, so what's the average, you know, days sales outstanding for your invoices? And they'll say something like 60 days. And then they'll say, well, these people pay with credit card. I'm like, you, you see what's happening. You're offering an invoice for 30 days. They're paying you in 60. And then they're getting an extra 30 days with their credit card. They've created 90 days of payment flexibility for themselves. So they're already creating the product that Credit Key has. You're just not offering it. And so it's a really interesting kind of shift in the mindset for, you know, terms are basically not enough. And in fact, you know, not surprisingly, the, the, the larger the order size, the more demand there is for a longer payment, obviously, right? Again, it goes back to just the cash flow. So I think the latest stats for us on, is orders over $10,000, 98% of the time, those are chosen with terms of 30 days or longer. So I think, I mean, it's like virtually 100% of the time, nobody is cho choosing 30-day terms. So it's mm -hmm. pretty fascinating to see that kind of paradigm. Eric, can you tell us a little bit more about how Credit Key was started? Yeah, I, by the way, I, I love this question because it's a great story. Um, believe it or not, we were actually founded around a patent and the patent was the ability to offer financing after a credit card decline. Believe it or not, there's about 10% of all e-commerce transactions that result in a credit card decline, but it's not necessarily for credit worthiness of the purchaser. It's really just the maximum allowable limit on the credit card. 
And so we took a look at what that would look like to go to market. And uh, most of the opportunity was in the consumer commerce space. This was uh, six or seven years ago. And at the time you had uh, companies like Affirm and Klarna offering financing at the point of purchase in the e-commerce uh, cart for consumer. And you realize that the market is like a little bit crowded. You started looking for other areas to kind of explore to, to utilize the patent. And it became pretty obvious that B2B is the proverbial sleeping giant. I mean, it's three times the size of consumer commerce in terms of GMV, and it's 10 years behind. So only about 10% of the transaction volume happens in the cart. So we quickly pivoted the patent to go after B2B. And um, that was, I guess, in 2017. And since then, we've grown to you know 400 merchants and 60 employees and um, processing a, hundreds of millions of dollars in, in loan volume. So it's been a, a fascinating kind of use case to see the need in, in the B2B world. And it's uh, gotten us to where we are today. Wow, that's fascinating. Sounds like a wild ride. <laughs> it is. It's been a very fast growing ride. We, we talk about our, our high growth quite a bit. I mean, we've been growing at 4x year over year since we started. And it's it just shows how big the market opportunity is for B2B. And that's just what keeps us up at night, which is great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so outside of the opportunities in B2B, um, let's shift over to the challenges. I'm sure there are many. Tell us about some of those. There are, there are quite a few. Um, starting uh, primarily with, if you think about B2B today, whether you're a manufacturer or a distributor, you know, they've been operating with this um, concept of like net terms uh, and you can kind of buy things on an invoice, then you can pay it 30 days later. And there's this general consensus that like, if it ain't broke, you know, don't fix it. Um, the problem is people are conveniently avoiding the fact that people don't pay invoices on time. They never have, right? Because they need more time to pay is really the kind of core issue. So what I would say is that what the biggest issue is um, just the adoption to kind of new business models. It's happening, don't get me wrong. But when we're talking about an $8 trillion a year market, you know, there's only so many um, kind of early adopters to new technology that are out there. Um, I think what's forcing the change to, tech, to to digital maturity and technology adoption are, frankly, companies like Amazon. You know, Amazon went from Amazon.com to launching Amazon Business. Amazon Business has gone from zero to, I think, 30 billion in, in run rate and in just a matter of years. That's mm -hmm. put a lot of people on notice of like, oh, wait people actually really do like to shop online without salespeople and get my stuff in 24 hours. So that's forcing a lot of these folks to get um, advanced pretty quickly. Then you run into like another challenge, which is if you think about it logically, there's hundreds of these distributors and manufacturers. There's only so many people that have experience in launching e-commerce. I mean, think about it. You need a digital leader to come in and run your company strategy for e-commerce, there's only so many people to kind of go around and, and have that experience. So we're seeing the kind of digital leader is, is a gap in, in a lot of opportunity for, for folks making advancements to getting online. It's happening. Um, interestingly enough, and not surprisingly in retrospect, there's a lot of these digital leaders coming in from the consumer commerce space. You know, they built and ran the e-commerce channel for Nike. And then when you realize that that's actually not fundamentally different digitally speaking than say global industrial as an mm -hmm. example um there's a lot of kind of cross pollination and overlap there so you know it'll come but it's a massive market um and i think the latest kind of forester stats on that was that i don't know it's over one and a half trillion of b2b e-commerce is happening online and it's growing at about 20 to 30 percent year over year so it's growing for sure it's just taking a little bit longer than people originally thought yeah, as you said, it's a bit behind. So <laughs> a lot of work to make up there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about small and medium enterprises. Um, are there any unique insights that um, Credit Key has obtained just dealing with customers in that space? Yeah. So if you think about um, what we do, uh, we are basically a small business lender offering kind of short-term financing to small and medium business customers. We allow customers to be able to make the purchases that they need from the suppliers that they work with and to be able to pay over time for those. Um, 
we again we've got hundreds of merchants that we work with we've got uh, tens of thousands of business borrowers that use credit key to make purchases and pay over time we're sitting on a mountain of data the most interesting kind of data is i, I kind of frame it up like there's a tectonic shift for who's the business purchaser today who's the small business owner it's the person that set up the shopify e-commerce store they're 25 years old they're 35 years old it's a demographic shift that i don't think people really understand they think about the old school small business owner the the hvac contractor the pool contractor the retail owner the restaurant tour our our data says that basically almost 45 percent of our business customers are 40 years and younger right they're very young um 35 percent of those people have already used you know solutions like a firm klarna etc to buy now and pay over time for their travel their peloton bike their clothing so they're already primed for what we offer so it's a natural adoption for those customers ironically enough i did some analysis a while ago um do you want to guess how old our oldest borrower is that's used credit key I have no idea. 90 years old. Our Whoa. oldest customer is 90 years old, which is re really cool. I, I think that that's cool. We're a bank. We're a lender at the end of the day, right? We offer a payment method that gives ultimate flexibility for a business customer. A distributor is a distributor. They're not a bank. Why are they taking on the risk of offering you know, customers terms and then having to set up a collection department to kind of collect the terms and you know, ironically, I mean, this is one of those kind of weird dances that we have with distributors and manufacturers alike, but they'll be, they'll be very proud of the fact that they won't have any default rates and that people always pay them, to which we always say, well, that's because you're really, really tight with who you give credit to. You're not approving the people that you should be. In fact, you're, you're leaving a lot of money on the table and we can work with people to give them a very concrete example of how much revenue we can drive by offering more flexible terms. So it's kind of like, it just goes back to like your core competency. Do, do what you do exceptionally well and then outsource the rest because you're not a bank. I mean, it's just that simple.